Hello and welcome to the first in the series I like to call Retro Reviews. Now the purpose of this is basically to take a look at an atomizer that was available a year or more ago. Um, in some cases now discontinued, so uh, you might not be able to get hold of what comes up in these videos unless you look in the second hand market. However, the one I'm looking at today is available and that is the, uh, the spheroid. Now this was very, very, very popular back in its day and it's still manufactured and you can buy them brand new. They're even plenty available in the second hand market as well. But um, yeah, let's have a quick vape and uh, we'll crack on. Right, so what we have here, we have the uh, the GP spheroid. Now I believe this to be a version two. I, I really can't remember, I've had it for so long now. Um, but anyway, I mean, during its heyday, it was, um, it was quite the revered atomizer, uh, simply because it produced an excellent flavour. It still does produce an excellent flavour, there's no past tense about it. Uh, and it was very, very highly sought after. Uh, I mean, there are a lot more available now. I mean, the uh, the, uh, the demand for them has waned somewhat. I mean, chiefly, most people who wanted one now have one, and uh, it's not really the current fashion in the state of atomizers now. It's not something you're going to use to blow massive clouds. Uh, it's certainly no good for your sub ohming, but what it is very good for is a good, decent vape. So, um, yeah, a little bit of history on this. Uh, this is manufactured by a company called GP. Now, I think, I'm not 100% sure on this, but uh, GP stood for Gus and Perseus, being uh, they are a Greek company. They normally trade on the vapor art. <clears throat> anyway, um, Gus actually went his own way, and he came out with the... Aeolus, I, I, Aeolus, I, I really don't know how you're supposed to say this, it's uh, A-I-O-L-O-S. Um, but yeah, uh, and you can see the similarities are very striking indeed, they're basically exactly the same. Now, I believe, um, this is what I've read, I mean I'm not entirely sure how accurate this is, that Gus was actually the original designer of the spheroid, so when he left to set up his own company, he basically built a spheroid. Slight different design, you can see the top cap here, or the top of the uh, the cylinder is a lot more slanted, whereas on the spheroid it's rounded. But that's pretty much the only real difference. Um, so let's take one of these apart. Now these are fully wicked and, uh, and juiced up, so let's take away the drip tip. And um, I'm going to show you inside of both of these. So what we have then, I mean, for those of you who have never seen a spheroid before, you've got uh, an inside there and basically you take this top bell off, okay, and then you cut some filler material. I don't know if I've got any kicking around actually. Uh, that's one moment. Yeah, this is the, uh, the filler material. You can use, say, uh, Sarah wool, which is what you put in fish tanks. Um, but this is the the blue foam material that uh, John from Flavor Arts was uh, was given uh, given away a couple of years ago. So I managed to bag some of that. But um, yeah, what you do is you put the filling material in around the uh, the central shaft there. Uh, that's where your airflow goes, and then you basically fill it up with with e liquid. Uh, the plus point of this is it's very difficult for this thing to actually leak because this stuff actually holds onto liquid very very well. It's pretty much like a cartomizer in this respect um, you know the only only thing is you don't have a coil up the center of it now this is the uh, the deck and what we've got here now this is coiled I've, I've called this in a more modern way in keeping with this series now this is a a nickel coil with a cotton wick okay and as you can see there you've basically got two securing nuts to hold on to your wine. Now the version 3 that I, I know to have uh, Phillips head screws as opposed to these nuts and I believe that's the only real difference. Um, but you can also see just underneath the coil, uh, let's see if I can get there, just there you can actually see the uh, the airflow there. So it's raised ever so slightly so if any juice does get onto the deck it's not going to go straight into the air hole. Um, but basically what you do with this is you put your, your, your wick on here and then that screws onto the uh, into the tube and that makes contact with the filling material and that in turn 
draws the liquid down to your coil. It's quite quite a good design to be honest. Now <clears throat> what we got here now in terms of airflow you can see one hole here and if I was to turn it round you can see another hole here. That is your airflow hole. That's all you've got. So it's, it's, it is a very tight drawer. Um, there is a non-adjustable centre pin there on the 510. These two holes here you use what is known as the GP fork. Um, I can't find mine at the moment but you use that and you turn that um, in a left-handed thread fashion so lefty loosey righty tighty well in this case it's a righty loosey lefty tighty uh, you, un you undo that and you can actually get into the inside if you want to give it a thorough clean now the I'm going to call it the gust because it's a lot easier it's basically exactly the same so uh, what we got here now the reason I'm showing you inside this is because I have coiled this one up in the classic spheroid style so what I've got here I've got the silica wick and I've got a loop on it and I've got a, a few turns I think it's four turns on there of uh, 0.2 canfil uh, but the deck as you can see is basically the same it doesn't have the raised airflow that you can see there but the airflow is in the same place but it's just not raised it's flush with the deck that's the only real difference um, you could have of course called this up in a different fashion uh, there were two there, there's two ways of doing these with silica one you do the sort of noose like I've done here uh, or you basically tie a little bow tie so you've got two little loops popping out and then they just stick up and make contact with your filling material in this instance what happens is you fold this over on itself like so um, I don't really know if you can see it's pretty tricky to put it on the camera um, fold it over on itself like so and then that loop there makes full of contact with the filling material inside here so all you have to do is just when you pop it in just make sure it lines up nicely and then screw it down so yeah so what I've done basically then as you can see I've called one up the the gus up in the uh, traditional spheroid fashion and I've coiled the spheroid up in a more modern fashion so uh, that's enough for the uppy closey stuff let's uh, let's give it a vape and welcome back so what I've got here then I've got the uh, the gus sitting on top of uh, a DNA 40 and I've got the spheroid sitting on top of another DNA 40. This has got the nickel coil in it and uh, the one the black drip tip is the Gus. Uh, that's a standard traditional build. Now I've got these both set at 10 watts, what I have now. Um, these weren't something you really pump a lot of power through. So uh, let's have a look at the Gus first. This is the, 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 the uh, traditional sort of setup. And that is a tight draw, it really is. But the flavour, the flavour is something else. Uh, really superb. You can see I'm not getting much in the way of vapour out of it. Um, to be fair, this might not be the best mod to pop it on. Um, I think we'll just use the uh, the, uh, the vapour shark a minute. It's actually got some decent grooves in there. So let's, uh, let's move over to the nickel one. So again, 10 watts. Uh, that's a slightly easier draw, maybe because of the uh, the mod actually. Let's uh, do that one. There we go. Let's pop this on the same same device. It keeps it all fair and square, doesn't it? So, uh, hmm. slightly looser draw, but it's still tighter, even on the same mod. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's crank the power up a bit. Let's put, let's put 20 watts through it. Now, 20 watts is something I'd never put through one of these back when I was using these full time. And I can taste a bit of burning there. Now, for completeness sake, the, uh, the ohmage of the coil on this one is 1.9 ohms. So it's quite high. I, I normally would have preferred to actually call this around about 1.2, 1.5. But, uh, you know, that's what it's come out with. I'm a bit out of practice with silica and, uh, and camphor builds, to be honest. So 15 watts, and that's a much better vape. You know, 
the vapor production isn't exactly terrible. Um, it's up there, you know, it's what you would expect, say, a, uh, an e-board or something to produce, you know. And what you've got to consider is at the time that these things were made, and still are made, you know, you can still buy them, buy them, buy them brand new. Um, they were made at a time where someone wanted a fairly small form factor uh, to use, you know, with uh, a more discrete mod. Uh, maybe with an Ego battery or or or, or something like that. Um, in fact, these are still quite popular with the uh, MicroStick users out there because they fit quite nicely. I believe they're about 16 mil in diameter. You know what, I should have checked. So again, let's have a look at the, the nickel-coiled um, spheroid. Uh, a 15 watt still. Oh, I thought it might be prompting about coils, but no. I do get a better, a, a better, a better vapor production out of this. I've got to be honest. But the other great thing about these things is, and it's not going to work brilliantly because of the uh, the image of the coil, but you can get yourself a fourteen five hundred mod. Okay, uh, for those of you who have never seen a fourteen five hundred battery, let's get one and compare it to an eighteen six fifty. Tiny. Tiny things. Now this is only 700 milliamp hours, so you're not going to get a massive life out of it. But then you you wrap your coils accordingly. So with a nylon two ohm coil, we call it a two ohm coil because it pretty much is. You're going to get a much better battery life. Um, however, the vapor reduction will suffer. So yeah, I mean it ain't bad, and it looks it looks the part. It really does. It's it's a nice discreet mod. Maybe something that someone with a beard shouldn't really use. I don't know. I'm playing my piccolo. Hmm. But yeah. Um. So there we go. That's that's a look at um. Say an old older style of atomizer in more modern terms. Now you can still buy both of these if you're actually interested and um, I've got too much stuff in the way on my screens. So let's see there. Now the uh, the spheroid that will set you back 96 euros and 50 cents. So pretty cheap uh, and they're readily available now. I mean back when these first were introduced um, you, you couldn't get them and blood more money. However um, they're on version 3 now now the difference with the version that I've got, the version three, basically the uh, they got Phillips head screws on them now, as opposed to nuts where you tie them up. Uh, have to use a small tool, uh, such as such as this, and uh, all vapors have a small tool kicking around, so uh, that's always a good thing. But um, the the Gus, and I call it, I call it the Gus because it's actually called the Iolos, I think, A I O L O S. Now you can pick one of those up brand new from uh, from Gus. Uh, the version 1.1, I'm unsure what version I've got, it's been so long. Now that is 55 euros, so almost half the price of the uh, of the spheroid. And for basically the same atomizer. Slightly tighter draw though, but uh, you know, if you're interested, have a look. Anyway, cheers. <laughs>